Yes, I mean, really, really nice opening. I would say if this closes green today, that would be very positive for the stock and for the opening. When you've had some of these IPOs that have come out and have dropped like a brick and closed negative from the IPO, that isn't good. It isn't good at all. And one example is Beyond Me closed green and held ever since the low of that open. That stock has lifted. And even with the drop off this week after that analyst recommendations came out, it's still holding very strong. These IPOs that came out and tanked, like Lyft, for example, that's terrible, bad for the IPO. So if this folds today, which we don't know, I mean, it just opened, would be really, really good for Chewy. And this is one that I do like. People love their pets. And, you know, I mean, I think this could be very successful. Sure. I mean, I think it also bucks the trend that these consumer tech companies that have gone public have not fared as well as the enterprise ones. You know, thinking about CrowdStrike as, a, as an example, why do you think Chewy is so different on that end versus an Uber and Lyft, the, the biggest consumer tech companies to go public this year? Well, really, again, you think about it, this is another online retailer that has a base already, has a strong support system. PetSmart bought them. Great investment for PetSmart. To, I mean, PetSmart today is really the winner in the Chewy, quite frankly, because they bought them in, I guess, 2017 for $3 billion, and God knows what they're going to end up making today in this, but a great acquisition for PetSmart. And it's because Chewy has a base, and they have something where they do the auto ship. So you can set it up where you get food coming every 30 days for your pets or whatever you want. And in New York, if you live in New York, you know almost every single person in the building has a dog or some kind of pet in New York. So people are people love their pets. And so this is just something that you say, this is a broad base. Not everybody uses Uber. Not everybody lose, uses Lyft. Now, what's popular in New York, but not everywhere in the country do people use those things. So you, if you see the growth here from this immediately today in the rally, if it holds 36, it's got to hold that open price. It opened at 36. As long as this closes above 36 today, that would be very positive going into the weekend into next week. But it, really, when you look at it, these IPOs, it's almost like I don't even remember the last time I saw this many IPOs, one after the other after the other coming out. I mean, but they're very risky to trade. If you're an active trader, to, to do anything this today, I mean, it's very difficult to read. You don't have any price data. If you're a technical, you look at technical analysis, you have no price data before today. Right. You know, for the very big performers this week, uh, three very different categories. Fiverr, really in the gig economy. You've got CrowdStrike as the B2B cybersecurity solution. And then you've got Chewy here today, which is probably the warmest, the fluffiest of all of them uh, that everybody enjoys to kind of see on a Friday, uh, but nonetheless being received well. You know, how do you rank this week as compared to some of the other big IPOs, big names that have come to the market throughout this first half of 2019? Well, Crowd, uh, you know, CrowdStrike, just going back and talking about that, that's one, even though it's up now since the IPO opened, it's falling today and it opened down. And so I have a, I have a problem with any of those that open down. I mean, I just don't think that's a good way for the stock to open initially. And as far as this week goes, even though, again, Chewy's the one out that's big today, the Beyond Meat, I really think, is the story of the last seven days. Last Friday, Beyond Meat had reported earnings, had a huge jump up Friday, and a massive, massive rally on Monday of the stock, ran up and made brand new all-time highs to 186. And then a JPM analyst came out and, 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 and put out a, a, a neutral on the stock to overweight, and it tanked the stock. So many longs were trapped in that stock. And to put out something like that two days after the earnings on something like this that has only been out for less than 60 days, I think that is very, very upsetting. And, and particularly because they were one of the underwriters on this Beyond Meat. I think Beyond Meat is actually one of the biggest stories of the last week. I mean, I know everyone's going to be talking about Chewy today, but what happened in Beyond Meat was terrible for that analyst to come out and say that, especially since they were one of the underwriters. For sure. And I think that's what was really funny about it. You know, I mean, it wasn't a downgrade. Uh, I mean, a price target a decrease. I mean, it exceeded anyway. Uh, Melissa, do you have any positions in any of these stocks? No, not currently. Although last week, again, if you bought Beyond Meat, on the earnings, on the Friday, it was a long. And if you carried it through on Monday as an option or a swing trade, it was a long. But I mean, the stock had such a big move in that two day period, you would have had to exit with profit if you were if you were long, because when a stock has a move 50 points plus or 40 points plus or 30 points plus and the previous night before the earnings, it was at 100. So even when it opened on Friday morning, it was up 30 points. You must take your profits. If you're an active trader, you must 
take your profits, but long-term investors, I'm saying we're trapped on Tuesday. Long-term investors, which is not what I do, and I don't teach people to do that. I'm, I'm active, participant in and out. But long-term people were trapped in that on Tuesday. And that isn't good, especially when you have one of the underwriters coming out and saying on that. Now, again, going back to active trading, if we're going to look at the Chewy today, I wouldn't be actively in this because there has been on and on again all of the last six months when the IPOs come out just like Lyft and just like the CrowdStrike, you really don't know how this is going to close today. Even though it's rallying now, even though it had the Lyft, you don't know how this is going to close. And if you're an active trader, you have to make sure that you have the momentum with you, at least for the move. Like if you bought this on the open, you could have taken it and got right out. Yeah. But I mean, how would you have known it was going to open and run right up to 41? You wouldn't have known that. Yeah. yeah. Melissa, two things I think we want to get in real quick. First, I want to come back to CrowdStrike because you, you bring up this long term perspective. And if there's one thing that you look at with a B2B company like CrowdStrike, who's positioning themselves as the sales force of cybersecurity, Salesforce went down in its first month of trading by about 17 percent uh, but it's a long play and we've seen how Salesforce has been able to rally since then do you think there are traders out there that would look at this and say you know I'm only going to take a short-term approach or do you think a, a b2b company like this as well as ones that we've seen earlier this year like zooms IPO they're just long plays and people are just kind of sitting and waiting you could be waiting a long time though that's the that's the thing I mean no if you, unless you have unlimited funds what if any of these stocks, and Lyft is a good example too, which Lyft could drop all the way down and lose 50% of its value till it swings around and goes over the IPO open, because that's the high of the stock in Lyft. So how do you know when it's going to go back to that point? It could take 12 months. It could take five years. It may never go there. Do you understand? Do you remember when Facebook first came out years ago? That dropped, tanked took about a year, but it's about 12 months or so till it came back around. But I mean, Facebook is an anomaly. Twitter did the same thing when it opened years ago. You don't know how far these stocks are going to fall once they start falling. I'm not saying they go to zero, but they certainly could drop 50% of the value before they turn around again. And are you going to be negative in a position for months and weeks and years? And can you be able to financially withstand that?